Mr. Gabriel Flores Jr., thank you for coming on to theboxingbar.com and welcome, my friend. Thanks for having me. Gabriel, first of all, a question I ask everybody, where were you born and raised? Born and raised in Stockton, California. What was your childhood like there, uh, being raised in Stockton? Uh, you know, it's, it's good. You know, I love my city, but uh, I feel like I got to stand up for us and uh, talk to you, you know, look, at, look up to me and see that they got a lot of opportunities out there because uh, the youth out here, we are going against the odds. You know, there's a lot of guns, drugs, violence out here in Stockton. You know, we're ranking the top 10 for the gang violence in the country, so it, it's tough out here. So the kids sometimes have the wrong mentality and think they can't make it out. You know, they can't go to school and be a, a doctor or be a basketball player or whatever their dreams are. And I'm here uh, to show them that they can do whatever they want, you know, as long as they put their mind to it and believe and grind. So it, it's, it's a little tough coming up over here. You know, uh, so I'm just trying to be a role model and show the kids that they can do it. Very true, especially for a Latino kid. Uh, what were you like as a kid being raised in a tough city like Stockton, you know, like one of the toughest cities, like you said, here in uh, California? Uh, it's tough. You know, you got to make sure you don't fall into the temptations because, uh, you know, it's so easy to get in trouble over here. You know, you're with the wrong crowd and all that. You got to think of the consequences before you do anything. You know, you, as a kid, you know, you know what's right from wrong, but uh, there's a lot of temptation. It's hard to fight the temptation, you know. Some kids think that they just want to go have fun and do, you know, what they want to do. But like I said, you just got to think of the consequences. So, you know, a lot of kids out here don't have the guidance. So that's why they fall into all that. And as a kid uh, being raised there, what were you like? Were you, you know, quiet? Were you shy? Were you crazy? What were you like as a kid, you know, being raised there? Well, me as a kid being raised there, I was outgoing a little bit. You know, I'm, well, as in school, I'll go in school. You know, uh, as a new kid, I, I was never a sports uh, talk person. I speak to myself. But uh, once I get comfortable and talk to the certain friends, and I'm, I'm always a little outgoing. I like doing sports, you know, for recess and all that. But uh Boxing was always first, you know, I got to make sure that I was good enough to go train and fight and all that, so I made sure I couldn't really hurt myself or injure myself for, for training. You know, so uh, I, I had a lot of tournaments traveling a lot, so I had a, I didn't have too much of a childhood, you know, but uh, boxing was pretty much my childhood, but uh, I don't regret it at all. I, I love what I do. And uh, being a racer at home, you know, what was your home life like? Did you guys, were you guys pretty close? Do you have siblings? What were you guys like as a family unit? Uh, we were real close. You know, uh, I had my brothers and my brother and sister. One brother, four sisters. And uh, the ones I, I really, like, lived with for the longest were uh, Yvette Gutierrez and Rogelio Gutierrez. They're twins from my mom. And uh, me and my brother got into it. Like, you know, uh, big brother, little brother things, we'll fight a lot, but we always had a lot of love for each other. My sister treated more of me like a like it's like a second mom, you know, she always treated me, she cut my hair, you know, got me ready for school when I was younger. So we were real tight, you know. Uh, my mom's always kept us real close, well mannered, you know, made sure we always did the right thing, shared with each other. So uh, mom always made sure that we were good and we knew how to act and all that, so we're world very close family, you know. We had so much love for each other. We we enjoyed our childhood together as kids, you know, playing and everything. How did your parents treat, or how did they see like the whole education thing with you? Were they pretty strict with you when it came to schooling and education, all that stuff? Oh yeah, my mom was very strict. You know, uh, if I didn't do good grades, if I didn't get good grades, I couldn't box. That's what my mom told me. And uh, one time I was booking around, you know, not doing my best in school, and she told me I'm not a, I'm not a fight. And so, you know, I got straight A's, you know, and I picked it up right away. And she just told me, she was like, I know what you could do. You know, you just got to do it, not be lazy, put your, put your mind to it. And uh, as a kid, I didn't treat school as the, as the plan as I should have. But once I had that talk with my mom, you know, I always knew that I needed to stay on, stay on task because uh, my school is very important. So I always made sure to do pretty good from there on. And I made sure to graduate. And that's one thing my mom's always wanted for me. She told me I never asked too much or anything for me. Like, you know, I want you to get an education. So I made sure I had to graduate for her. What was it like the first time you went into a boxing gym or the first time you were around that? What do you uh, remember from that first experience of seeing that, if you could remember that far back? Uh, we're in Oxnard, actually. My brother was... Uh, my brother was sparring. My older brother was in the He was the boxer. And uh, I wasn't even boxing yet. 
and he was sparring, and I told my father, I want to, I want to get in the ring and spar, and with no training, I didn't even have training yet. I just wanted to get in there. A pop laughed at me, and he's like, No, you don't. And I was like, No, I do. And they're like, They don't got no kids your size. You know, they got an older kid, like two years, three years older than you, a lot heavier than you. And, and I was like, I don't care. So I want to get in there. And so I got in there. You know, I got touched up a little bit because the kid was much bigger and older than me. But uh, Pop still said I, I showed heart, you know, and then he asked me if I want to do it again. I was like, yeah, I want to start training when I turn seven. And so that's what we did. You know, while were you guys training there? Is, was there something going on there? Yeah, uh, I believe my dad took my brother out there just for sparring. You know, they at Robert's gym, Robert, uh, Robert's dad gym. I, remember, I forget his name. Eduardo Garcia. There you go, Eduardo Garcia, his gym out there a while back. And then my brother went over there and sparred over there and, you know, got some work in. What was that thing that kind of attracted you to to keep doing it? I mean, I was raised a fighter. Like I said, out here in the South, and it's tough. You know, a lot, a lot of my family were, you know, part of the streets and all of that. So I was, I was raised tough. All my cousins always fighting uh, on, on Christmas, wrestling, you know. We did it for fun. You know, whoever went got a little candy bar type thing. So uh, I, I was always raised a fighter. And the, my, my pops, he always uh, watched boxing as a kid. And I really looked up to Roy Jones Jr. So uh, me watching my brother all the time in the garage really pumped me up. Made me want to do it. You know, I, I looked up to my brother as a young kid. So, you know, that's what got me into it. I never looked back since he started. What do you think attracted you to, like, a fighter like, let's say, Roy Jones Jr.? I know he did those magical things in the ring that nobody else could do that. You know, they're not even in the, in, in the, in the manual to be doing. But uh, what, what, what attracted you to Roy, someone like Roy Jones Jr.? Well, exactly that what you said. He could do a lot of things not everybody could do. You know, he 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 got his own style. He'll get away with stuff that he's not supposed to be doing. His hands down. He's fluent. He's showboat. You know, he got a lot of flavor, and uh, that's what I always liked. You know, he uh, he was never a boring fighter, and he looked real smooth. He looked like when he was in there, he was doing whatever he wanted to do. He looked always comfortable no matter what situation he was in. And I liked that, and it was very entertaining to me as a kid. Do you think boxing came naturally to you, or was it something that you really had to work hard to get good at? Man, you know what? I'm tell you this. This this doesn't come easy to anybody. You know, uh, you could be God gifted. I feel like I'm God gifted, but you still got to put in your hours and time all the time. So uh, I trained very hard ever since I was a kid. I was 11 years old, waking up at four in the morning, running. You know what I mean? Before elementary school, so I, I put in my my deeds. I put in my work all the time. So I never, never slack off and say, oh, I'm, too, I'm good. I don't need to do that. I'm good enough. I got enough skills. Nah, because uh, that's, not, that's not me. I always work hard, you know, no matter what. You know, um, you could be the most skillful fighter ever. But if you don't work, you know, that, that's going to catch up to you. Somebody's going to come by and knock you off the charts for sure. The other day I was watching a, a, a video of um, an interview with you uh, that your dad had posted uh, on his page, and he – was talking a little bit about himself. He was saying something like that he used to roll with the gangs and he was in and out of jail and all that stuff. Do you think if it wasn't for boxing, you would have probably been in the same, gone through the same mistakes that your dad did at one time? You know, a lot of people tell me, uh, what would you be doing if you weren't a boxer? And I tell everybody, you know, that, that scares me, that question, because I don't know exactly what I would have been doing. So who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe not. I can't, I can't really tell you with that answer, but, um, I'm glad I am a boxer and uh, I'm on the right track and I get to show kids what they could do with their life instead of, you know, following that road. So um, maybe, you know, I, I can't really give you a clear answer on that one. Your dad obviously didn't mind that you became a boxer, but how did your mom take it? You know, seeing her, her little one, you know, getting in there and taking punishment or fighting in a, in a sport or doing a sport that's very dangerous. How did she see that, you know, when she first started seeing you get in that ring? I would say she's not a normal mom. You know, she she believed in her kids. She wasn't scared for us, really. She believed. She knew what my dad was teaching us. She she was into boxing herself. She was a fan of boxing herself, so she knows what's going on in there. She knows when my pops teaching us. We're we're a hundred percent ready. You know, so uh, when we went in there, she wasn't really like that scared type mom. You know, very nervous. She had faith in us, and so uh, she was pumped for us just as much as we were pumped for ourselves. You know, my mom's, uh, every time, let's say if there was a day, you know, my brother or me didn't want to train, we ran to our mom's, my mom would take us right back into that garage and make us train. You know, my mom never, uh, never was that safe blanket where we ran to her if we didn't want to do nothing. You know, she was just as hard on us 
in boxing as my father was because she wanted us to do great. She knew our abilities, so she knew we could do something very special in this sport. So she just pushed us, uh, she pushed us to our limit and made sure we do what we did. And, you know, I thank her for that. I think a lot of people know about the tragedy there and uh, about her passing there. Um, right after all that happened, was there like a pause in your career or did you go at it even, you know, stronger because of that? Uh, I went out even stronger. You know, my pops wanted me to take a pause, take a break, but uh, my mom passed away March 18th and uh, I fought in a tournament in Colorado in um, late May, like May 28th or something like that. And uh, my pop said, just take that tournament off, you know, get some time to think to yourself, you know, uh, with your family and all that. And I told my pops, I was like, nah, I want to fight. You know, I want to do it for my mom. You know, I know she's still looking down on me and uh, she was very supportive of my dream. So uh, I want to go out there and do it for her. You know, I know she's still watching me and want to see me succeed. So I'm going to go out there and do that. And pops was like, all right, come on, let's do it then. And uh, I went out there, man, and I, and, I, and I took first place out there in that national tournament. And it's crazy, you know, to hear you say that. But at, at, then again, there's that, there's that something that not everybody can do. There's some people that say, "No, I probably stop fighting after that." But you know, sometimes when it comes to life, you know, you have to be a mathematician and find a way to make a negative into a positive. And uh, you probably did that, you know, with your uh, uh, amateur career going forward. There, did you like, you know, get that that whole amateur experience that that you wanted, or do you wish you could have stayed amateur a little more, you know, thereafter? Uh, I'm gonna touch on that first thing you said. Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you gotta turn something very negative into positive. You know, keep an open mind, try your best. You know, try not to let somebody kill you. Try to use it for your good. You know, use that fuel for sure. But uh, my amateur experience was amazing. I love the amateurs. You know, as long as it lasted, and uh, I think I turned pro at the right time. You know, I was hot in the amateurs, but it started to die out for me. It, it did, to be honest. And but we, I had uh, so much fun. I met a lot of people. I feel like I went pro at a at the perfect time, but uh, cause I, I was fighting a lot. I had 90, 98 fights. I was ninety one and seven, so uh, I feel like we went pro at a great time because I was killing everything in amateurs and it started like I said, it started to die out. Yeah, I remember the first time I moved out of Oxnard. Uh, it was in 2014. I moved to the Central Valley for about six months uh, in a little city there in uh, Merced County, and. Um, I was looking for boxing. I was looking for any kind of boxing scene because I was used to, you know, Oxnard being so vibrant. And uh, there was really nothing. But the only thing I saw was a video of this kid named, you know, Gabriel Flores. And, uh, you know, I saw a few of your videos. At that time, I had a page called Oxnard is Boxing. And I think I, like, uh, I posted a, a video or two of you uh, during that time. And, uh, you know, I remember thinking, man, hopefully this kid makes it. You know, at that time, you were probably like 13 or 14. And, um you know, down the line, a couple of years later, bam, you signed on with top rank as the youngest ever. You know, what what was that like, you know, signing on, you know, as uh, the youngest kid ever at that time, you know, with top rank and Bob Arum and all that? What was that experience like for you? You know, uh, it was a blessing for sure. I was very grateful for that opportunity. Um, it felt unreal at first, you know. Um, nah, actually, I feel like that's the wrong way to put it. I just, I was, I was a little shocked. You know, it didn't really feel unreal, but I was a little shocked because I did not expect to be 16 years old and 16 years old and stand in front of Bob Aram and him announce my name all crazy like that. But uh, it was a blessing, and uh, I just had to soak it in. But ever since I was young, I told myself I'm gonna be like that. You know, I used to watch Floyd, Oscar, all of them at the press conference. Like I'm gonna be up there, same thing, like just like that. I just didn't think it was gonna come that soon, and uh, so it felt good. I soaked it all in, I took it all in. But uh, like I said, I didn't really let it overwhelm me because ever since I was a kid, I knew that was going to happen. So I didn't, I didn't really trip off of it too much. I was just really grateful. The sacrifices you made, you know, just that itself. I mean, I can't think of my high school years without the partying and without the, you know, all the junk food and, and hanging out late and, you know, going out and, and, you know, with all my friends whenever I want. You had a, you know, pretty much kind of maybe give it up, you know? I mean, what was that sacrifice like for you? Was it hard for you to sacrifice that? Or did you uh, feel like... Uh... Well, I wouldn't say give it up. I never even started all that crazy stuff. So um, I just knew what path I had to take. I knew what I had to do be, to be successful. I knew this wasn't going to be easy, but uh, you got to look at what's more important. You know I mean? You got so-called sacrifice right now to uh, get what you want in the end. But to me, I'm living my dream, man. Uh, I'm pushing for it. 
I'm doing what I want to do. I'm doing what I love. So I don't really see a sacrifice. I'm blessed to be in the opportunity. And so I'm soaking it all in. And uh, all that is, uh, you know, it's all waiting for me. That's nothing that's uh, that's here now. I got to do now. All that will still be there when I'm a world champion and all that. Why did you know it was time to go pro when you left that the, the amateur scene? How did you know that this was for you and it was time to leave the, the amateur stuff and, and, and now become pro at such a young age? How do you know when you're ready, in other words? Uh, I knew I was ready because I've been ready my whole life. This is what all we're thinking of. Uh, we've been fighting like a pro since an amateur. We didn't throw a million punches around for points. We threw to uh, hurt. We threw to snap a head back. So we threw correctly all the time. We made sure every punch we threw was correct. So Pops always trained me to be a pro boxer, not to uh, be a perfect uh, amateur. So that's how we always knew we were ready. And we didn't like the Olympics. We didn't like how all that was going in. Michael Collin got robbed. They're fighting with no headgears. How about somebody gets cut? Uh, you know, you could easily get cut by a head, by elbow, or shoot, even a punch. You know, and uh, get scar tissue from amateurs and not even really get paid and jump into pros with a scar tissue. Uh, it just seemed like high risk. And um, I feel like Olympics was not prestige as it is, as it was once before. Boxers are not on commercials. They're not showing them that much love and all that. So uh, we felt like pros were the perfect for me. That's true. Seeing all the how the ABA and all that is the deep waters and you're starting to see all that, you know, all that, all that dirtiness going on in that game too. You know, it's a good thing you did what you did also. Um, what was it like going into that first night, going into your pro debut, going through the drapes for the first time? What do you remember about that experience? It was amazing. Uh, uh, believe it or not, I didn't have no nerves. I felt good as ever. I felt so comfortable. I had so many people there in Reno and Reno for my pro debut. So much love from Stockton. I felt like I was home. You know, I had so much. There was a lot of my family there, a lot of fans, people that have been following me through the years, a lot of people from Stockton. And so I went in there comfortable, man, smiling and teasing, in there ready. And so uh, when that battle ran, I wasn't shy. You know, I got a second round TKO victory. What were the biggest differences that you noticed from going in there from your amateur to going now into a pro ring after the fight was over? What were the biggest differences there? Uh, I just sat down on my punches more, took my time. You know, uh, look for opening, using my jab more. You know, just being more patient. Because uh, in amateurs, it was, it was fast, fast rounds, only three rounds. So you had to make sure you got off, you know. So uh, be a little more, I was just a little more patient and picking my shots correctly. Earlier this year, you were blessed with the opportunity, you know, to fight in your home city of Stockton as a main event in the place that you're always representing. You know, you filled it up with over 10,000 people. What was that homecoming like for you? What was that whole experience? Bam, you know, you're going to you're gonna be there in front of all these people that, that you grew up with, that seen you grow up in front of them. What was that experience like for you professionally and, and personally? Unbelievable, man. Uh, it was crazy. It was, it was more than what I expected. When I was when I was walking out, I could feel all the energy, everybody screaming. I could, feel that I could feel everybody's energy going to me. I could feel everybody's voice vibrating off my body. So uh, when they were announcing my name before the round started, uh, I was looking around like, damn, this is like a world title fight. I mean, there's so many people here. I see the lights and everything. This looks like, like a world title fight right now. And I said, that's how I'm going to treat it. And so when I when I went in there, I felt good. I was like, I'm going to treat this like a world title fight. And I got a third round t uh, knockout, you know, put boys to sleep. So and I felt great for sure. So uh, I made sure to shine for my city. And we could see it in your face and all your actions there after the knockout. And, you know, when they announced you as a winner and during the interview and everything, uh, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a highlight, even if you win or, or when you win titles, like you would say, uh, you know, it, it's still going to be a highlight, you know, that, that first night there in Stockton, you know, what are, what are the standout things to you the most? What are the things that gives you goosebumps, especially when you think of that night? Uh, I love how they showed the video, uh, the introduction video of my mom and everything, you know, that was, that was very special for me. And uh, how they put a picture of my mom's in the front row, you know, stuff like that. And then even just seeing the people there, that, that, uh, my mom's friends and all that, gave me goosebumps. Uh, just hearing everybody see how excited, how pumped they were, you know, how how much I had the city behind me. That for sure, you know, just, it made me feel real good and, and it, should, it makes me hungry. And I wanted to really do something big for the city. This is only the beginning. And many of us Latinos, you know, is, you know are very spiritual people. We're, not to get all paranormal or anything, you know, but do you feel your mom is always around you? Do you see a lot of, do you see and feel a lot of signs from her, like on a daily basis? 
Yeah, I feel her. Like, uh, in my interview after, after the Sotorina fight, in the post-fight interview in, in the ring, I told him, like, I felt my mom. She told me I was going to get a third-round knockout. You know, it was crazy. It, that that just shocked me. That made me feel like, whoa, because I, I felt her. She, she told me that, and uh, boom, there we go, third-round knockout. So that was crazy to me. I was kind of tricky and everything. So I do indeed feel her. Like, she's, she's right there watching over me still. There's been a lot of uh, combinations of father, you know, training their sons and whatnot, and especially Roy Jones Jr. is uh, one example of that. But there's also been many, many cases like his, you know, where the father-son, you know, training thing also could break a, a relationship there. What's the difference that you think that your you and your dad have that maybe, you know, others didn't have that made their relationship fall apart? I have a really good understanding. You know, ever since I was seven years old, I understood why my my pops was doing what he did. You know, if he got mad or anything, got frustrated. I never held that against him because I knew, I understood why. You know, I wasn't showing my full ability. I knew I could do better. I'm just as hard as my, on myself as he is on me. So that's, that's, that's the difference. I'm very hard on myself when I do bad. And so my father is hard on me. I look at him and I understand why, because I'm also mad at myself. So uh, I think that's why I got a very good understanding of pops. And, and uh, when I'm home, pops shows me a lot of love. You know, when he, he, he shows that father figure. He's not always a coach. You know, we could be at the movies, and he'll probably talk about boxing still, but he's been the father still. You know, he, he really shows me the dad side a lot, too. Uh, your dad, when your stock goes up, his goes up as well as a trainer. How do you see him developing as a trainer, you know, through your eyes, the eyes of one of his fighters, you know, you, his son? Pops is a fanatic. You know, he, he's a perfectionist. He, he's always on this, you know, so he's always getting better and better. And I'm getting better and better because of him, you know. So uh, my pops is easily the best trainer right here in California, you know, I believe. He, he just got to show it, you know what I mean? He just has to have the opportunity to show it. I know it. He knows it. You know, the world don't know it yet, but uh, we're going to show it. My dad, had a, my dad had a few fighters, you know what I mean? But uh, that, that were really great, good, but they couldn't, they, they couldn't take the heat. You know, it takes something special for you to stick with my pops. And listen and go through everything, you know what I mean? You gotta you gotta be a man. You can't just take everything offensive. Like I said, I understand when my pops is on me. You know, I know I did wrong. You know, uh so you just gotta you gotta know what you're in here for and really push and you know my pops is giving you his hundred percent at all times. So uh Pops is, is a fanatic, he's always learning. So when Pops goes out there and has a fighter, he's ready. He's gonna make sure that fighter's ready. And Pops does everything he does in his power for us to win. So uh, he makes sure he takes the trips and all that. So he makes sure his fighter is ready. Aside from all the, the fame and, and and the success that you've had, you know, financially or whatever, uh, if you put that to the side, what are the biggest things that you think you've gained from boxing? Um, discipline. You know, the teachers are real, real great balance of discipline. You know, uh, you know, you can take a lot of things from boxing and, and, and show it into life. Like, uh, you always got to be professional. Not a, not a professional, not a professional boxer, a professional. Like, you always got to be somewhere all the time. You know, you got to you gotta make the weight. You, know, you got to do things the right way. So um, that's one thing for sure. And uh, make sure uh, boxing, boxing humbles me in, in a weird way it does. You know, uh, I always make sure I got to push myself to do better and want more. You know, and uh, it gives me a voice for these kids. That's the one thing I like the most. You know, uh, when I talk to these kids, listen now, you know, and, and uh, it's easier for me to do something and talk to them than somebody older because, you know, they, they, they always hear an old head talk to them and tell them what to do right from wrong. So it goes in one ear and out the other. But when they see somebody younger, like closer to their age like me, I feel like they listen more because they could kind of relate to me more. And uh, anyways, you know, it's just, like I, I tell them, I was just like you, born and raised in Stockton. There's no difference. So that's a big plus for me, you know, the kids listening when I talk. When do you think we're gonna you're gonna see yourself, you know, in top contention? Would you say it'd be in a year from now, eighteen months from now? When when do you see yourself up there, you know, ready to uh, to be next in line for for that title shot? I feel like in eighteen months I'll probably have a title, or I'll be ready, getting ready. My next fight will be a title shot, but I wear no rest for playing things uh, by fight. But uh, I'm getting sharper and sharper. I'm getting older and I'm getting stronger. And uh, the best thing I have is ring IQ. That's what a lot of these fighters don't have. You know, uh, some of these fighters depend on one thing. I got a lot of things to depend on. I got a lot of tools in my toolbox. So uh, 2020 is going to be a big year, a very big year. Everybody's going to be turned on and give a four junior. 
What should us fight fans expect to see from Gabriel Flores come 2020? 2020, they're going to start seeing the best of uh, Gabriel Flores Jr. I haven't showed everybody my full potential yet because I haven't had those opponents to let me show my full potential yet. I feel like when the competition gets better, I rise up for sure. You see, you see the best of me, so stay tuned. There's a lot, of, lot more for me to show. So uh, it's going to be an exciting year for all of us. Well, Gabriel, thank you very much for coming on, man. I finally got you on, and I, I've been following you since uh, since you were a kid, and uh, it's great to see that since then you've got onto the pros, signed on, you know, as the youngest at one time, and all that stuff, and seeing all your success now, and you know, you're headed uh, towards that top contention like we we're talking about, and I hope 2020 is your year, and for not just you, but for your father as well. All the best to you guys. Thank you very much for coming on to the BoxingBar.com, man, and I hope. Next time, you know, it won't be so long before I get you on again. All right, man. Sounds good. Thank you for having me.